Good afternoon. Today is the 4th of February and this is the Atwell Wilson Motor Museum at Carn in Wiltshire. It looks like uh, someone's house but actually the museum is behind here. Well we can't go that way so uh, we shall go round the other way. But first of all we got this very very rare Peugeot Partner electric. I didn't even realise we made these for our market but they must have done. They were actually made between about 1998 and 2005, very similar to the Citroen Berlingo at the time, and many of you will be very familiar with the Citroen Berlingo of this time, uh, those of you who are watching the Harbournut channel. Mr Bill from the Fuel Power channel has just arrived, who I'm here with today, so uh, we shall shambolically shuffle our way round. I do apologise if I get anything wrong, if I fall over, if there's wind noise, if I get interrupted by things, I'm afraid that's just the way that it goes on this channel. Look at this viewers, it's an old mobile petrol sign. And I really wish that unleaded was 64 pence a litre still. It would be much easier if it was, but it isn't. Um, outside the front of the museum we've got this very old bike. I don't know actually what type of bike this is at all, I've no idea. Um, and then we've got this old petrol pump, which is crazy. That's, that's a four-star pump as well, so it's definitely pre-2000. Yeah. I wonder if the 24-hour security cameras are still in operation. And look at that. Check guarantee cards. Oh, four-star. 54p a litre. Amazing. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. So here we are inside the museum. Um, there are some members of the public around here of course here as well because it is open today. It's actually the third day of opening for the year. Um, so I'll try to keep them out as much as I can. This car actually was at the NEC Classic Car Show uh, last November and uh, this is where Mr Bill, who's at the back, he's going to be starting probably in a different part so we don't sort of follow each other around, which will look a bit weird. Um, and I came across the Atwell Motor Museum, the Atwell Motor Museum um, for the first time. Despite the fact that I live, oh gosh, about sort of 75 minutes from here, I'd never heard of the museum until we went to the NEC. Mr. Bull lives even closer than that, but yeah, neither of us had ever heard of it. So it, it started really not as a museum at all. Back in the 1970s, I think, and um, we'll have a look at the first car that was ever in the collection in a second. Um, a couple called the Atwells um, actually uh, started um, collecting some classic cars, and um, that later became a wedding hire business in, I think, 72. And then in 1981, the cars were uh, put together into a collection which has grown since then. There's actually a whole new section over there, uh, which we'll go to right at the end, which is, which is brand new for 2022. And uh, we'll see some of the sort of personal cars that uh, were, were owned by the museum founders as well. So this is the car we saw actually at the NEC back in um, November. This is a 1992 Mini City. It's got the 998cc engine. Obviously, this is a great interest to Mr. Bill because he owns a car that's very similar to this. Wheels are different, though, um, because this is a, a 92. There's very slight differences between his and this one, which uh, is a 91. But same colour, though. It's Henley Blue. And uh, this is actually available now to uh, win for a pound. You can, um, you can actually enter a competition to, uh, um, to win this very car. So uh, we'll go straight away, actually, to the first car that ever came into the collection, which is this Buick here. It's a 1937 Buick Series 40. It's right-hand drive, actually. That's very interesting. Um, this was uh, Richard Atwell's personal transport for a really, really long time. Um, there we go. Yes, yeah, so there we go. Winning car, business side of 72. It's an Albemarle Buick. Because it's got a right-hand drive, I imagine this wasn't probably built in America. I don't actually know where these were built, to be honest, apart from there. But uh, there we go. 
the lighting in, in here isn't sort of the better. It never is within you know indoors, um, but obviously we're not outside in the cold, so that's good. Oh, I can smell the, the, the leather in here. The 30s cars do have a very distinctive smell, and this is certainly one of them. Yeah, it's a big old thing, that isn't it? It's very shiny on camera. It's one advantage of being in, I suppose. And this is another car that they've um, kind of had for quite a long time. I think this is one of the uh, very first cars they got. What says his? So there's also hers, which uh, we'll see a lot later on. So this um, singer junior from the 30s was left to Richard Atwell by his godfather. I think it's a, yeah, it's a 31. That is um, not quite my sort of thing. I prefer this one, actually, this little um, standard nine here, little nine. For many years, these um, manufacturers were very, very close together, obviously, kind of unrelated, um, all the way up until the end of standard in 63. Um, Singer continued a bit later, I think. They um, kept going until 1970, but they were both based in Coventry. I quite like this actually. That's um, that's a really nice colour actually. That little standard from '32, 1936 Ford Model Y. Um, this is sort of a British market. It's an exclusive car, I think. Um, they were made in France and Germany under different model names. Side valve engine in here. Later. I enlarged um, in some of the uh, other Ford cars. Green interior, very nice. Well, Klein, though, wow. Yeah, the, another manufacturer that's totally disappeared. I think they um, they were up from the Black Country. I think you find these in the Black Country um, the Museum, but I've been to, actually. went there about a year ago, actually. There we go, the motoring sensation of the year. Entirely new 13-horsepower Klein, and it's a fabric body one. You can see the uh, fabric on there. And from Wolverhampton, yeah, absolutely. So uh, from the Black Country. Right, okay, we will shamble, shuffle our way over here and have a look at some later Fords. Um, Iota console, 1954. I always remember these cars from an episode of The Baron called A Man Outside that was filmed in 1966 when these were literally just sort of bangers and they actually set one in far, on fire in the episode. Um, but uh, this one's in rather nicer condition than that one, I think. I will be having a look at, inside one of the cars in particular later on. I have to ask to go inside. You can ask to go inside, they're, they're locked normally, but you can ask to have a look inside. Ford Popular, this is the 50s Popular, the Citizen and Beg one. I was speaking to uh, Mr. Bill earlier on, and actually it turns out his father's first car ever was, uh, was one of these, 103E Popular, based on the um, earlier, I think it was the Anglia, um, but with the side valve engine, 1172, from the... Um, the current generation Anglia and Prefect, the sort of um, far more up-to-date square one. I think my grandparents had one of these as well at some point. Oh, look, you only got one wiper. Excellent. 1953, Austin A40 Somerset. Saw tons of these, actually, uh, one of the Austin County's cars at the uh, British Motor Museum at Gaydon um, during the BMC Leyland Show last July. It's only got a 1.2 engine. Oh, my gosh, this... That'll be a bit slow, yeah, 0 to 60 in 28 seconds. Not the car for the motorway age then, not really. But very, very amazing styling, nevertheless. This was, this was when Austrians were put together with a great deal of care. And uh, a lot of the time they were sort of the envy of the world. I think they sold you know, these even in America. Um, certainly the uh, A40 Devon and Dorset were. The Wolseley 444 here. Can't remember what year exactly this is. It's amazing. You, you can still hire some of these cars um, as wedding cars 
so the, the wedding car hire business is still going um, even now, which is which is crazy. We'll see some of the sort of um, more popular wedding cars in a moment. So it's a 1955, very similar, of course, to the Riley Pathfinder. Uh, this one's got a uh, 1250cc engine. I think this is a, um, I think this is a, a B series engine. I might be wrong about that. I think it's a B series in this. Later on, they got a bit of a larger engine. Ooh, a Lee Francis again. One of these long, long forgotten Coventry makes. It's a 1950 14 horsepower light saloon. You don't really see many of these. But the, the highlight for me of one of the shows last year, which was at Nebworth, was seeing a Lee Francis Lynx. It never went into production. They made, I think, two or three of them. Um, in 1960, long after the production of the normal cars had ceased around 54, I think it was, they stopped making cars um, in sort of mass production. There we go, the most numerous Lee Francis ever. And this is a late one from 50. And this is, oh, it's an Alvis. Gosh, another, another car from the same sort of, I think Alvis were also based in Coventry. So, uh, 34 Alvis Speed 20 SB. Some of these at the time, I think, were front wheel drive. I don't think this one is. Um, I think most of the earlier ones were. Someone in the comment section below will correct me, I'm sure. Uh, here we go. Charlesworth Bodies from Coventry. So, this is, uh, had a, a uh, special body put on it by somebody else. Amazing. It's got a big history file there. Smell the leather. <laughs> it's amazing. Another Buick. Another right-hand drive Buick. Oh, this one's actually got the open, open window, so we can have a look inside. There's even glass partition there for when you've got the hood down. Yeah, Buick 86 convertible Phaeton. First owner being Vernon... Tate of the Tate Law Company. Well, so we've got a replica garage here. Got a couple of cars in there. It's a Austin Big Seven from 1938. We've got a little friend on the roof as well there. A decapitated friend there. A little one by the windscreen too. 1934 Austin Light 12.6 Ascot. So, yeah, very typical cars that would have been in a workshop like this. And we've got some information here, the Jack French garage. It's original garage is safe from demolition. There we go, that's absolutely amazing. Built in 1949 from ex war department materials and was in Gloucester. It doesn't say here but when it was actually... Um, when it was actually... Uh, um, Removed and uh, taken here, though. <laughs> so strange, you know, this sort of um, impecunious enthusiast and uh, low-cost motorsport. With so many people, Colin Chapman was the same. Uh, he started off with a uh, um, converted, um, modified Austin Seven um, at the back of the. Uh, railway tavern that his parents owned in Hornsey in London and built the cars out there. So we've got a Trojan. We've got solid tyres on this one. I know some of these have solid tyres. Another make that's long, long, long gone. Red show donated to the museum. Excellent. 1928 Trojan Achilles Saloon. What on earth is this made of? This isn't... This fabric body as well, it's, it's, it is, wow. That's amazing. Trojan was famous for the only car that was ever, ever advertised in the Church Times. Which is a fact you didn't need to know. Humber, got another Humber down there, a much later one. Uh, this is a, um, what year is, it's a 31, Humber 1650. Humbers are always very prestigious cars, the kind of thing the local mayor would have had back in the day. 
It looks like traffic haters there as well. It's a sensible addition. We'll have a look at some of the uh, more modern stuff on the, on the other side of the museum later here, um, including hmm, that one. Uh, but we'll go to the back first, actually. We'll have a look around here. So this is a uh, Daimler, but it's one of three Daimlers that are on the uh, wedding car fleet, actually. You can just ask them if you uh, want to hire one of their wedding cars. See that this Rolls Royce is, is ready to go. You even got the thing there for the uh, flag if you're head of state. So this one's a 1938 uh, Daimler EL24. It's got a 3.3 litre engine. This is uh, the days when Daimler was owned by BSA, as in the motorcycle manufacturer, which they were until 1960. So entirely, um, you know, independent design in the sense that well, BSA didn't make cars. BSA made much smaller cars, I should say. They didn't make them for that long. Um, but the BSA cars were much smaller than this. Daimler was much, much higher up in the hierarchy than BSA were in terms of the cars. In terms of the motorcycles, it was a different story, really. But, um, yeah... Very appropriate registration number, it's because it's an EL. Let's have a look at this Rolls-Royce Silver Wraith. That is absolutely majestic. Look at the amount of legroom in there. It's so big, I think there were those little jump seats in there for the, uh, well, the bodyguards or whoever you had in there. Probably bodyguards if you were the head of state. Coach built, of course. Yes, it's a 54. This one is a uh, limousine. It looks a lot darker on video than it actually does in real life. It's a, it's a sort of very rich blue. It's almost a beige leather interior. But there is a beige leather interior coming. But we're going to have to wait a little while. 1934, Vauxhall 14.6. This has the very prominent bonnet flutes, which are a feature of Vauxhall design. All the way, really, until the... Uh, 1960s, early 60s, and they're highlighted in chrome on this car, so you can see them quite easily. It's very nice, uh, a car that like an old English white or cream colour. And Vauxhall, for many years, they made sort of upper end cars. They weren't um, the sort of the generally mass market cars. They made, you know, quite expensive cars back in the day. Oh, a Rover 14. Very nice. 1936. It's a sports saloon. Saw some of these at Roverfest actually last year. And then Riley RMB in 1951. I love these uh, older green colours on these cars, and not all of these cars have actually been restored. This, this museum is staffed entirely by volunteers. Um, because they're a charitable trust, they don't receive government funding. Um, so well, it's all actually through donations and uh, you know, entry fees. Now, there's a huge, huge collection here of, of models. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time sort of there, but we can see the co-founders in the museum. There's Richard and Hazel At Atwell. I think she called herself At Atwell Wilson. But that's why it's the Atwell Wilson Museum. Um, uh, he, he died about, I think, about 2010, I think it was. We'll see her uh, sort of personal car a bit later on. So loads of models and loads of kind of automobilia and just artefacts and Cooper, what is that? Oh, it's some kind of heater. Ooh. Radio at Caravan Toma, yes. My friend Mr. Partridge me off talking about those. Models of, lo of lorries and uh, more lorries. Eddie Stobart. I'm already so much stuff here. I mean, this isn't the only collection of models here. There's actually, there's actually more of these. There are several gentlemen who um, left these to the, um, to the museum. There you go. You can actually hire a wedding car here as well. More lorries. This is a, a collection of Phil Clark, who died, um, sadly, of cancer in 2018. Um, but he was an avid collector of them. And look, they're all organised so carefully. Here's all the MGs, Bentley, Al Armstrong Sidley, Alvis, Standard, Jaguar. I'm not going to be here too long because otherwise I'd just, uh, you know, I'd run out of time. But uh, there we go. Some oil cans. 
have a look at some motorbikes. I'm, I'm, this is very brief in here, particularly because there's going to be a uh, some in the background who's going to be um, going to be doing some some work in there. They're, going, they're just start making a little coffee shop and an entrance. Um, so uh, yeah, that's why there's uh, some going on in the background. Sinclair C5. Um, just sort of, some of you will know a lot more about these bikes than I do. I don't know anything about bikes and motorbikes really. Well, I'm drawn to this uh, aerial here. This um, aerial square four with a what's what's only a Monza sidecar. Yeah, so loads of um, different things in here. Ooh, ooh, I didn't realise the section was here. Oh, here we go. Oh, yes, fantastic. What on earth is this? Look at this. Oh. This is a bit like a car for one or something. Oh my gosh. That looks absolutely terrifying. A Jeffcott micro car. I've never heard of one of those before in my life. My goodness me. That looks extremely dangerous. Wow. There we go from Bacalm Dairy. We are in Khan, of course. And, um... Look at this. Bedford CA. Yeah, it's got individual seats in it as well. Um, I'm not going to, to sit on that seat, actually, although it is open. You could, of course, drive with both passenger doors, both doors open if you were feeling particularly brave. Um, very popular, of course, if you were, I don't know, like a parcel delivery driver, you just jump out. If somebody hits you from the side, well, uh, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Ooh, a Seagull outboard engine, 1957. Um, more calm dairy stuff. Milk float, what, what year is this from? Open sided flat box and flat form. Oh, there we go. Post livery, post office, Admiral TM, Ministry Hospitals. There we go. There's uh, some information about the museum. Oh, a Honda Acti. Oh, wow. It's an 86. Very much like a Suzuki Supercarry, something like that. Brilliant. When I look through the window, it is very, very, very basic. You sort of sit almost on top of the engine. Amazing, isn't it? It's amazing to find something like this. A commercial vehicles just don't really survive very often, do they? That is just absolutely amazing. I think there's like 15 Acties left in this country or something like that. They're not. They're not common. Oh, and a first-generation Civic as well. Wow. These were revolutionary cars when they came out in. Uh, 1972. Later ones, of course, have the CVVC engine, C, sorry, CVCC engine, which uh, was absolutely amazing for the time in terms of meeting pollution regulations that were far, far, far in advance of the ones at the time. So this one's got the sort of weird automatic, it's like a, like a two-speed auto. Relatively late one, actually, on a, uh, on a T, so... Um, be about sort of about 1978, 79, finished in 79, so quite a late one. I can't like to have a go in that actually, to be honest with you. I don't like to have a go in that. Look at this. Toyota, Toyota Carina. Uh, this is an 80 or an 81 on a W, so pretty late one. Um, TR, which is a sort of Southampton Portsmouth plate. You don't see these, do you? You just, you just, you just don't see these at all. They weren't very common when I knew. But someone would just bought a Cortina, I imagine. And that was the nearest rival to it, I should imagine, for UK buyers. Something like a Cortina or maybe a Cavalier. Um, not something like this, which is, uh, which is, which is great. Oh my gosh, this is the second Peugeot electric car that we've actually got. Here. One was a van. I didn't realise they marketed them over here at all. I thought these were just. These were just marketed um, in um, in France and other places on the continent, but this is actually a right-hand drive one. 
So yeah, it's about, about 2004 was the sort of last year for the 106 as well. It's a very late 106. Uh, started in 91. And this little, little battery pack here. I think these have something like 38 horsepower. And not to 38.5 seconds. Um, yeah, very poor range and it cost £9,300. So I think I think the electric system in this is very similar to the uh, the partner van that's outside. 1968 Renault 4, um, yeah, 850cc four-cylinder overhead valve with an eight-to-one compression ratio. This is not like the uh, Renault 3. I think that was an even more basic version um, of uh, of one of these. Wow, this uh, gentleman owned it for. 22 years before he went to the museum in 95. He's very careful here, views not to get caught in anything. Yeah, Gilly was sprouting out the dash, hatchback, sort of like a, an answer to the Renault, sort of, no, sort of to a 2CV, but a long, long time after that. <laughs> what have you got here? It's, I've offered some of these cars are sort of all sort of mixed together, actually. Um, it's really quite. Uh, it's really quite sort of interesting in the way that they are. And you can get this sort of wedding as well, one of these. Temperature, temperature gauge is uh, up, up on here. Oh, it's a Morris, a Morris Major, gosh. As opposed to a Morris Minor, which you could also buy around the same time. Uh, what engines? Oh, okay, it's about 1.9, 1.8 litre engine. Wow. Ooh, an E30. Gosh, I didn't realize we'd be seeing an E30 today. E30 Cabriolet. It's a nice colour, isn't it? Lovely colour. Maybe this is a quite a recent edition or something like that. There's no information plaque on this one. I wonder what model this is. Let's take a look. It's a 318. I didn't realize we made a 318 convertible. Wow. It's a, must be a very late one because it's got that um, steering wheel there. It's got some Amsport additions to it. So, 1964, Morris 1100 ADO16, kind of similar to the uh, Austin 1100 that I filmed um, last year. Yeah, fantastic. Ever so common back in the day. Um, Britain's best-selling car, I think, right away up to about 1972. I have driven two of these, actually. There's an, a video on another one uh, coming uh, on the channel next week. 1968 Bedford TK 214. Yeah, so uh, the kind of thing, yeah, you would see. You would see that, that sort of carrying the uh, 1100 on the back there. TKs were made into one form or another for a long, long, long time. I think the steering column in, <coughs> in these was actually used in some Dennis lorries until very, very recently, which is really strange. So a chassis of a Series 1 Land Rover here is 1950. New Hudson Sports Cycle. There we go. This one's obviously been sectioned up so you can, uh, you can see how it all works. Even the exhaust has been sectioned up. There's the... Uh, Prop shaft and differential there, all the enormous number of gears and low ratio and things like that. Um, I have driven a, a series Land Rover, it's a series three lightweight. It wasn't quite like this, it was a little bit more modern than this, but similar in feel, I'm sure. And we've got a, what was a Continental here? 1978, Mercury Monarch. So why does it say, um, why does it say Continental on it then? I'm, I'm really confused with this. Oh no, but sorry, this is the Continental. That must be, that must be a, um, <laughs> um, a sort of um, a board for a car that's not in here. So it was, yeah, 75 in Continental Mark IV. A very, uh, a very large car. Yes, absolutely. Because museums have this since 1990. They certainly owned some of these cars for a long time, haven't they? Really long time. So uh, we've got um, sort of cream leather interior with a 
buttoned fabric and things like that. Oh, here is a Dennis talking of a Dennis. It's a very old Dennis. It's a 53. Uh, what does it say? It's an F8 fire appliance. I don't think I've ever seen one of these before, actually. Um, it's local to here. MW is um, uh, the local plate to the area. And there we go. It's, it's showing where it actually served over the years. So, yeah, it's uh, lived in this area for its working life. Amazing. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good fun place to come visit. Actually, didn't really see the um, extent of this dormobile conversion earlier on. It's got a pop top and everything. Yeah, the CA van is, is very rare. That's absolutely true. Uh, another Riley. It's an RME. So we saw an RMB earlier on. This is an RME. This is a 1.5 engine. The other one is a little bit, uh, a bit bigger than this. I get really confused between all the RM series because they kind of ran in parallel sometimes. It wasn't just there was an A and you know, a B and then a C and a D and an E. It kind of overlapped. I, I get very confused about these sorts of things. But uh, there we go. Let's have a look. Actually, have a look inside the interior of this. It looks like a 30s car, doesn't it? But very much like one of those. Look at this wooden dashboard. That is absolutely crazy. Someone's very. It's time to put his seat belts in there. That's a, that's a good idea. So we've got some more of the motorcycles on this side and some interesting gear to uh, to wear if you're going to... to uh, suffer the elements. But I think we're going to have to stop here, viewers. So we've got quite a lot more to see. So we'll end the um, first part here. And then we will then we'll come back for some more. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below. And uh, we shall see you soon for more inaccurate information.